Hey everyone, just wanted to give you a quick update on some of the new cool things that I've seen based on sort of the searches on the internet I've been doing about this eruption. Now the first one that I want to take a look at is, and I know everyone's been dying to see this, is the actual thickness of the lava that is, is coming out of this eruption. If we look down here on the legend, we have the thickness in a color graph and it's from zero, which is the blue, all the way up to around 50 meters thick, which is the red. Now keep in mind, this map is a bit older. There's been a lot of developments with the new fissure that's opened up yesterday. So a lot of the things that we're gonna be looking at today don't have that included, but I think it's still really exciting to take a look. So looking at this height map, you can see where the actual lava is coming out of the eruption is around 50 meters high. It's building up higher and higher as it goes. And then obviously, as it goes towards the edge, it's decreasing in size. So the height at the, at the max is almost 50 meters and then it goes down and you can just take a look at the graph here. I'll put a link to the graph so you can take a look at it in more detail. But I thought this was really cool and I know a lot of people were excited and interested in knowing exactly the height of the lava in terms of where it is right now. The next thing I want to look at is this map here, which there was an article presented and written by Sibjörn Gudmundsson, who is a geologist at the National History Museum of Iceland, and he wrote this amazingly detailed article. Unfortunately, all in Icelandic, but it was an article all about this eruption, some history, the types of volcanoes and eruptions that occur in, in sort of Iceland in general, as well as the magma that's coming up from really, really deep in the earth and the sort of chemical compounds of what all of this lava has in it. This map here is one that shows the possible channel of the actual lava from the eruption. So you can see this red star here is where the initial eruption occurred. Now again, this doesn't show the new fissure that opened up yesterday, but I think this is a good idea to show you basically where everyone's estimating the lava is going to sort of flow to from where it is now. So first they're thinking that it's going to go towards the east through a pass and then go into this area here if we zoom in called Meridalur. And this is a very large valley area and you can see the height is listed in all of these numbers in terms of where it is in, in relation to the sea level. So the height of where the eruption is is around 208 meters and then Meridalur is 135. But it is massive so it's going to take a long time to fill up this area before they think that the lava is going to go further out. Now from there they're thinking that the lava is going to go eastwards going down through this valley and go through a pass that's at a height of around 135 meters towards Sandfet. From there, it's a fairly easy path down towards this area here, Lingbrekur, where the lava will then go down towards the main road, Surstandervegur, which is this blue line right here. And this is where everyone's parking, and this is where all of the con controlled sort of traffic flow is happening. Now, this area here, they're thinking that the lava's going to sort of sit here for a little bit of time because there's enough space for the lava to disperse before it goes down into the ocean. All of these forecast models obviously depend on how long the eruption is going to last, and it's extremely difficult to predict where the lava is going to be and when it's going to get there in the future because it's not known how much magma is actually present in the magma chamber that's feeding this eruption. So again, it's impossible to predict how much is actually going to emerge from this eruption. But if the eruption lasts for a long period of time, a few months, a year, who knows, they're saying that a considerable amount of lava could eventually reach the surface. And this type of flow is what they're looking at. Now I'm going to put a link to this as well so you can take a look. And again, this is from the Natural History Museum of Iceland. The last thing that I'm going to show you, which I thought personally was amazing, is a 3D model that this company EFLA here in Iceland created using drones to image and map the 
eruption when it occurred. Now this is again, it's a bit older, so you can see if you've been watching the live feed or you've been looking at some of the images that have come out recently, it looks quite a bit different from this, but you're able to click and drag and zoom around in this eruption area and take a look at exactly how it looked when they created this. Now, this area here is completely enclosed in lava, so you can't get there anymore, but you can see, if we zoom in, the amount of detail they were able to get from the 3D scans that they created using the drones. Now, when you're actually coming to the eruption site, the path that you're taking is from this view. So you're coming in from the bottom here and walking up towards the eruption and then following the path to the left and going around. Now there's some other people going on this side now, on this side of the mountain here, to go view the other side, but it's quite a journey to walk here. And then you walk, of course, around the eruption to get a better look of the actual lava flowing out of this this area here so i thought this was really fantastic good job to these guys who put this together it looks phenomenal and again i'm going to put a link if you want to take a look if you have vr glasses i believe that you can set this up so you can view it in vr as well which unfortunately i don't but i think that would be that would be amazing it would be a really immersive experience so i just wanted to show you these quick few things there's a lot of developments over the last little while Take a look at the links. The article is amazing. It's in Icelandic, but you can translate it if you use Google Translate to translate the whole page. There's a lot of good information in there. And of course, I have some live feeds going on. So if you want to watch the eruption as it happens live, be sure to check those links out. And I'll put a link to one of those or both of them in the video at the end here. So until next time, thank you so much for watching. If you like this, hit the like button. You can subscribe and you'll get updated with all of the information that I'm finding that's cool or the latest information on the eruption. So until next time, thanks so much.